हाँ पढ़ना मैम आवाज आ रही है आपको क्लियरली जी मैम यू हैव द पी ऑफ दिस लेक्चर टुडे इस लेक्चर यस मैम सब भेजे हैं आप सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग विथ टुडे इस लेक्चर इट इज ऑन स्प्रेड बाइड मिल ओके सो एनी डिफिकल्टीज रिगार्डिंग द लास्ट लेक्चर नो मैम ड्रम ड्राइंग एनी कंफ्यूजन नो मैम नो heated drum. that concentrated milk makes a thin film which is scraped out and then turned into powder okay whereas in spray dried milk we follow a concept of atomization atomization is basically reducing the particle size to bare minimum in order to make it in a in a shape so that the surface area is maximum and the mass is minimum and the product and the liquid droplet dries quickly is this clear what is atomization Nitish, can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, as you can see in the slide, I have very clearly mentioned you what is the principle and what is the purpose of atomization. So, the basic principle of atomization is that we reduce the size of the liquid particle to fifty to five hundred one fifty microns, of in diameter. This size is taken into consideration because at this size, the outer surface area is to the weight of the liquid material is the maximum. hence drying takes place quickly because mass is low and surface area is high okay and if the surface area will be high then the area for conduction of heat from the liquid to the droplet will also increase okay so yes, it will also yes, as a result what will happen the droplet will dry quickly okay so the principle is clear that what we do in atomization yes, now the purpose yes sir purpose is that it makes drying more efficient and whatever powder we obtain by this process of atomization the particle size is perfect enough that whenever we mix it with water or any liquid base it dissolves quickly and provides the texture and the flavor of the original liquid which was dried okay so if we have uh, milk powder which has been uh, prepared by spray drying method then atomization is followed and when atomization is followed the powder we get whenever we mix it with water the texture we obtain of the final product is quite similar to the original product that is the milk by which it was made clear so what is atomized yeah. so for spray drying technique at uh, no matter which technique we carry on atomization is a very important aspect and this atomization is obtained by different methods and different techniques okay so before going that we will revise the principle of spray drying technique so what in spray drying technique we do we take the milk or the basic product we heat it and we and we either concentrate it or we don't concentrate it that be, that is based upon our own requirement we may concentrate the liquid we, we may not concentrate the liquid but the liquid is preheated then what we do that with the help of an atomizer we reduce the droplet size from 50 to 150 microns and then those droplets are spread in the environment like fog or mist they suspended in the hot environment in hot environment what happens there is exchange of heat the uh, moisture content from the droplets to the atmosphere happens by conduction okay sorry by convection i'm very sorry and then what happens was is that the particle dries up and then falls down that particle is uh, that powder is then sieved and uh, we get the dried product is this clear so i'll read yes sir i'll read the uh, uh, the slide to you if anywhere any confusion is there you just let me know i have explained it totally 
So principle is atomizing, that is 50 to 150 microns, the preheated and concentrated milk to form a spray of very minute droplets, okay? Like fog or mist. So what we do that these minute droplets are sprayed and it forms, a, uh, it takes the shape of a fog or mist inside the drying chamber. These droplets are then directed into a very large, suitably designed drying chamber where they come in contact with currents of hot air. So one side you're giving uh, fog or mist and the other side you're giving hot air. So what happens? Due to the hot, high temperature of the heated air and the large surface area of the atomized droplets, what happens that the water in the milk particles, it evaporates and, and the moisture is lost almost instantaneously. And then they transform into a fine powder. Okay, is this clear? Spray drying principle? Yes. Okay, yes, so we we'll move to the next slide, which explains the different types of uh, spray drying. And these different types are based upon the constitution of the machine and how atomization is obtained. So based on atomization, Spray drying technique is basically of two types. There are various other types of spray drying technique, like there is open air, there is vacuum, then based on temperature, based on the type of nozzles, based on machinery, based on product. There are very, various different types of, atom of spray drying techniques. But here we will take, uh, we'll discuss the different types, of, uh, 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 different types of spray drying methods based on the atomization technique, okay? So the first technique is hydraulic pressure jet or pressure spray nozzle, okay? So as you can see, there's a pressure spray nozzle. Here we have a nozzle from, uh, through that nozzle, liquid milk or a concentrated liquid or normal preheated milk or any milk product is sprayed out with pressure into the hot environment. And from there, we get the milk powder. As the name suggests, I will discuss it in more detail in the coming slides. Then comes compressed air, spray or pneumatic spray. So as you can see, um, get from the topic, uh, from the heading, that compressed air is used in such kind of drying techniques or in such kind of spray drying technique. Compressed hot air is used. And the last one is centrifugal spinning disc. Now centrifugal spinning disc, as you can understand, there is a disc which spins and there is a centrifugal force, a force which starts from the center and moves out towards the outer corner of the discs. Okay, it's centrifugal force, that plays an important role yes, in this type of drying. Okay, now what happens is the centrifugal spinning disc is the most popular way of spray drying products. Why and how, we will discuss it later on. So now we will take each and every method of spray drying one by one. The first comes the hydraulic pressure jet or pressure spray nozzle. Now, as you can get from the name, pressure spray nozzle. So obviously there is a cone shaped spray nozzle which is used for this purpose. Now what happens, this pressure spray nozzle is also known as a swirl nozzle. Why swirl? Swirl means to move in all directions. Like we take ice cream, we take a scoop and make a swirl. Yes, yes, Similarly, this nozzle moves in that particular manner. Why? Like now you think, we have a nozzle and it faces only one, one side of a square box. So what happens? Only one portion of that box will be utilized. But if that nozzle moves in all direction, the air from all the corners will be utilized for the drying purpose. Is that clear? This is simply a khet. If we put water from one pipe, then what will happen? The water will be cut from one side. फिर वहां से फैलेगा इसके बदले हम क्या करते हैं कि उस पाइप को हम हर तरफ घुमाते हैं जिससे क्या होगा कि पानी हर तरफ फैलेगा ओके दिस इज क्लियर सो व्हाट हैपेंस इफ वी यूज द स्वर्ल नोजल इट स्वर्ल्स 360 डिग्रीज इन ऑल द डायरेक्शंस व्हाट हैपेंस दैट द फॉग इज फॉर्म इन ऑल द पार्ट्स ऑफ द ड्राइंग चेंबर एंड complete utilization of the heat energy takes place because heat cannot be stored it is an energy so if we do not utilize the 
box or the drying chamber as a whole heat will be lost and that will not be utilized in making the powder the milk powder if we use a swirl nozzle that fog or mist will be formed throughout the drying chamber as a result what will happen that the heat of um, in all the corners of the chamber will be utilized is this clear now yes ma'am from the spray nozzle a pressure is created with that pressure the concentrated or preheated milk is sprayed okay so when we spray the product with uh, pressure then what happens small droplets appear so that pressure ranges from 1500 to 5000 psi okay now this homogenized milk is sprayed out with the help of a homogenizer pump which has 3 to 5 piston of pressure holding capacity okay so with the help of 3 to 5 piston homogen homogenizer pump what we do the milk is sprayed out of the nozzle in a manner that the fog is formed in each and every corner of the drying chamber and this or this action also intensifies the atomization that is the size reducing action of the pist of the nozzle is this clear yes sir ya fir se repeat karu ek bar hindi mein ya no 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 it is clear it is clear okay then we'll move to the next type of spray drying system that is the compressed air or pneumatic spray so you imagine there is one stream of preheated condensed mil milk okay and we have another stream of hot air okay is this clear now yes sir this is the stream of condensed milk which is coming with pressure and this is the my right hand is the stream of uh, of uh, hot air uh, which is uh, under pressure okay what in this system what we will do we will place the hot air stream perpendicular to the stream of the milk or the hot liquid what will happen at the point of cross section the uh, the milk particles will scatter okay due to pressure this is clear yes, and due to this splitting and scattering of the uh, stream what will happen that the liquid particle will atomize will become smaller and then these particles when exposed to the hot dry environment of the drying chamber it will turn into a powder clear yes ma'am any confusion is there then i can repeat no ma'am okay. no ma'am so as it is written here heated compressed air is streamed with high velocity i'm sorry i missed the word air here heated compressed air is streamed with high velocity this stream of hot air strikes the stream of preheated milk at right angles as i told you at right angles which clause causes splitting of the stream clear and atomization of the milk particles these particles when come in contact with dry hot air they dry up and form dried milk particles is this clear any confusion no ma'am no ma'am no, no. now we will come to the final method that is a centrifugal spinning disk which is the most common method of uh, carrying spray drying technique okay just a minute so i'll now move to the next slide so that you can understand what a centrifugal maybe a centrifugal disk looks like so as you can see it is a disk having a small disk inside and then there are radial veins throughout so what happens is basically hot concentrated milk is poured inside this first inner outlet okay from this inner outlet the milk moves towards these radial veins and this disk moves at a speed of 3500 rpm to 50000 rpm depending upon the diameter of the disk okay smaller the diameter higher is the speed or revolutions per minute okay so what happens that this this disk moves milk comes inside 
and since it is moving so what happens milk in the form of thin streams it scatters and split spills outside in the form of small droplets is this clear yes sir okay so as you can see there are radial vein discs which are used um, hemispherically shaped liquid chamber containing the product is present on the top of this disc then the liquid falls from the chamber to the revolving disc then what happens that this viscous preheated milk falls from the liquid chamber on the uh, then to the spinning radial discs these veins spread the milk out and atomize it and as soon as this atomized milk droplets come in contact with the dry hair of the drying chamber they turn into milk powder now as you can see the third point i have written that radial discs of small diameter revolve at 50000 rpm speed whereas radial discs of larger diameter revolve at lower speeds that is 3000 rpm yes sir why so why a why a larger diameter is revolved in a, a lesser speed than a smaller one is there inversely proportional when it gets uh, to the angular velocity they are both uh, yeah so what happens is that when we pour the milk in on the inner circle of the disc it will take a certain amount of time to enter the veins now if the disc is large or or of high a larger diameter what happens is the liquid will take time to enter the radial veins if in this case what happens if the speed is more before the milk can reach the vein it will spill out because of centrifugal force so we have to give appropriate amount of time so that the milk moves from the inner circle to the radial veins and then moves out so if the diameter is large then the speed will should be less so that there is plenty amount of time so that the milk moves from the center of the disc to the radial veins and if the diameter is small then less amount of time is required so the revolutions per minute also increase clear yes ma'am okay so as i have told you centrifugal spinning this technique is better than the pressure spray and the compressed air technique i told you this so why is it so okay the first point is absence of small orifices that are subjected to clogging so in spraying technique what happens is that there is a nozzle and we spray through it it might happen that the spraying point clogs okay so it yes ma'am in centrifugal technique clogging does not happen so that is a plus point then what happens is that by spraying and concentrated uh, compressed air techniques we cannot use milk which is highly concentrated because the nozzle may clog or the jet may not take jet stream may not take a proper speed because of high uh, soluble density solute density okay so what happens is in centrifugal spinning technique we can use uh, we can utilize or we can use milk having 50% solids up to 50% solids to dry because in that technique no nozzles or uh, power or outlets are needed or pressure filled outlets are required so what happens is that it permits spray drying of highly concentrated milk that radial disc is as good as for fresh milk as it is for 50 of concentrated high concentrated milk which has up to 50% of solids so in case of concentrated milk we can use this technique okay second is no pump pressure is required so what happens the mechanical input decreases so the machine itself is easier to operate because the mechanical input is less fourth is capable of continuous operations under prolonged periods without special attention it is a easy to operate method having very basic mechanical needs and the the disc can be operated for long time like the pressure nozzle or the compressed air nozzles cannot be used or uh, high temperature compressed air nozzles cannot be used for long periods of time but the disc can spin for longer period of time hence it its output is also more than the rest of the two techniques and last is free from abrasive action since minimum pressure is required in 
the uh, in the formation of the product like in through uh, spray techniques pressure was used to push out the milk or in compressed air techniques compressed air was used or high pressure nozzles were used to stream milk so what happens whenever pressure is more the tendency of abrasion also increases but since in centrifugal spinning disk no pressure is used while formation of the product hence abrasive action is minimum is this clear yes ma'am okay then the disadvantage of centrifugal spinning disk now it is a spinning disk so there are ball bearings which help in continue in carrying out the spinning of the disks so what happens that since it is a continuous process and the, and the disk remains uh, continues to spin what happens that the ball bearings sometimes they erode away okay so cost might be a factor because continuous movement of those disks may damage the ball bearings or speed bearings and that may be uh, that may lead to high cost of maintenance is this clear okay now we will discuss what are the advantages of spray drying system over drum drying system in the last lecture we discussed the advantages of drum drying system over spray drying system today we will study what are the advantages and disadvantages of the spray drying system over drum drying system first advantage is it yields milk powder which is of markedly superior appearance flavor and solubility so the product we obtain is of better appearance flavor flavor because it does not develop any cooked up flavor which is a common problem seen in case of drum drying technique and solubility solubility is high due to atomization as we have studied okay is this clear yes ma'am now since the yes, flavor and solubility of the product is high hence the product is of superior quality and a product of superior quality always gains higher economic is always of higher economic value the value of the product is always higher okay so hence the product we obtain yes, that is of higher economic value and this method is economical when large quantities of milk needs to be handled so when the amount of milk which needs to be processed into dried milk powder is very high then one should always go from spray drying technique instead of drum drying technique clear okay ma'am yes ma'am then comes the disadvantages of the spray drying trick technique over the drum drying technique now the spray drying technique is more sophisticated in in nature because uh, instrumental parts like nozzle swirl nozzles compressed air creators high pressure bearing valves all these things are there taken into are required for carrying out spray drying system so since technically more sophisticated equipments are required hence these techniques are sophisticated okay now since yes, the technique uh, the the instrument is sophisticated hence the plant is also complicated okay because there is set yes, which needs to be maintained the pressure nozzle has to be perfect the drying chamber should be properly maintained so that whenever the uh, the product is sprayed from the pressure nozzle it directly reaches to the drying chamber okay so this kind of sophistication has to be maintained so that the chain flows properly okay and since it is a complicated and sophisticated setup hence large capital investment is needed for setting up a spray drying system clear yes ma'am okay so any confusion in today's lecture no ma'am i'll stop screening the uh, sharing the screen so uh, any confusion in the last lectures no okay so then i'll end up the meeting okay and in the next okay. chat, in the next lecture we will discuss about different spray drying techniques based on different categories today we discussed only based on atomization okay. next time we will discuss based on other categories clear okay thank okay. you okay. i'm meeting now okay thank you okay, welcome